in our spinal surgery video series today i want to discuss a very specific topic and this topic is about uh, spinal surgery done in old age one of the questions that i am asked very frequently in our spine surgery clinic is this people ask doctor should we get spine surgery done at this advanced stage a very short answer to this is that if it is indicated not only the surgery should be done in the best possible way but avoiding the surgery in such circumstances can cause serious consequences a very important thing to remember here is that selection of the patients that is the patients who are to undergo surgery should be very precise and the technique technology and the operating team performing such a surgery should be absolutely the best so amongst many misconceptions about spine surgery this is the one that frequently comes up for discussions the surgery during old age and i often need to address it before proceeding with surgery a very important thing to remember here is that selection of the patient should be very precise and the technique technology and the expertise of the operating team performing such surgery should be absolutely the best among the many spinal conditions that develop after the age of 60 lumbar canal stenosis stands out as a very common condition it is also eminently treatable condition if it is diagnosed properly but this is true if it is treated in right frame of time the symptoms or patient experiences caused by this condition are referred to as neurogenic claudication so these symptoms include low back pain a feeling of heaviness or numbness in the thighs and legs after walking a short distance tingling and numbness in the legs and the need to stop walking to relieve these symptoms after resting for a while the symptoms subside and this allows the person to walk again for some time however the distance they can walk without pain and discomfort decreases over time eventually even standing in one place then causes back and leg pain for women these symptoms often manifest as difficulty standing at the kitchen counter with the constant urge to sit down both men and women complain that they cannot stand for a long time when they go to a mall for example they also report to me that they dread going to banks with the fear of standing in long lines without timely diagnosis and treatment this condition can lead to a loss of strength in the legs and even loss of urinary control because these symptoms are somewhat unusual diagnosing the condition early is often challenging in the initial stages individuals can walk a certain distance without discomfort this can sometimes lead to incorrect conclusion that the weakness is only a consequence of aging and the patients conclude that with age advancing they will have to tolerate these symptoms i will highlight this issue with a recent case recent means it was operated about one year back and this patient has been very regularly following with us in our spinal surgery clinic this example will highlight how in a correctly chosen patients the symptoms uh, can be treated very effectively so i will tell these symptoms in the patient's words when he came to us he told me doctor the back pain and leg pain i have been experiencing is worsening daily but since i can still tolerate it i have decided against surgery at the age of 69 he had been dealing with back pain and lumbar canal stenosis for 5 years he also had diabetes for 15 years and high blood pressure for 10 years his back issues began with mild pain this was followed by cramps and pain in his hips thighs and legs after walking a short distance this distance was initially 300 to 400 meters after walking for such a distance his thighs and legs would feel heavy and numb and it would literally make him stop his walk he would typically rest for a few minutes and he, this allowed him to resume walking however what happened over days and months was that the distance he could walk without pain or numbness decreased significantly when he saw me in the clinic he could walk only a few meters before experiencing severe discomfort and pain despite his worsening symptoms the patient believed that avoiding walking altogether would prevent pain and solve the problem however of late merely standing for some time would cause buttock pain thigh pain and heaviness at the same time all the while he was increasingly getting frustrated by conflicting opinions about his condition and spine experts and non spine experts opining about his problem i remember asking him tell me you can only walk for 5 to 7 minutes now am i right to which he said yes 
and two to three years ago, you could walk one hour daily. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. He admitted. I then told him, you reduced your walking because you thought avoiding movement would prevent back pain, leg cramps, leg pain, numbness. While this reasoning might seem logical, it overlooks critical issues. You see, mere act of walking becomes even more important as we age. Regular walking controls diabetes, it prevents heart disease, it also keeps you active in social and personal life. If you stop walking altogether, your quality of life will deteriorate rapidly. Eventually, even standing will become painful. Your MRI shows that the nerves in your lower spine are compressed. Surgery can relieve this pressure and provide support to the affected vertebrae. The goal of the surgery isn't just to relieve pain or reduce leg and thigh numbness, but the real goal is to restore your ability to walk, manage diabetes and heart health, and improve your overall quality of life, your social life. Deciding whether or not to proceed with surgery actually is a science in itself. It requires careful assessment of the patient's condition and uh, diagnostic findings. While avoiding surgery might seem like a comforting option, it isn't always the best choice for the patient's health. We have to understand that general advices like don't opt for surgery, it is too dangerous, your age is too advanced, might bring comfort to the listener, but it isn't always the correct medical choice for patient care. Here, I will also say that rushing into surgery without thorough evaluation is also irresponsible. So let's not forget that. Neurosurgery is a well-developed science requiring years of study and patients must make informed decisions after listening to really expert opinion based on scientific knowledge and realistic expectations. Also, let us not forget that no human endeavor is without risk, including surgery. However, it is essential to weigh the risks of surgery, okay, the risks of surgery against the consequences of avoiding that surgery. I often emphasize that patients should ask not only what are the risks of surgery, but they should also ask what are the risks of avoiding surgery? What will happen if I avoid the surgery? And the answer to both of these questions together often reveal the right course of action. So coming back to our patient's case, after I explained these points to him in detail, he realized that it was in his best interest to undergo the surgery. The patient's problem was lumbar canal stenosis with one vertebra slipping over the other. It is called as uh, spondylolisthesis. So I will show this to you with uh, the model here. Now, this is a typical spinal unit. Spinal unit means two vertebrae, one over the other and the intervening disc and the spinal canal which is behind through which the nerves pass. So in spondylolisthesis, as one vertebra is slipping over the other, as you can see here, this is this vertebra, the upper vertebra is slipping over the lower vertebra while standing, walking or you know jogging or doing any uh, activity in standing position. Even while sitting, it can slip. So as it slips, it causes compression on the nerves behind, which are passing through the uh, canal, lumbar canal. And these nerves repeatedly get compressed. Along with this, there is an element of uh, spinal stenosis, which means uh, it is a degenerative process called as uh, spondylosis in advanced age. Now, if we look at his MRI, you can clearly see how this vertebra has slipped forward. You can see it clearly in the X-ray also. Now coming back to the MRI, you can see this area of spine, right? This is the normal spinal canal. The nerves here as seen as gray lines are free. Uh, they have no compression. They are floating in the cerebrospinal fluid, which is seen as a white shadow here. Now see this area. The nerves here are very badly compressed, right? And this is because of uh, spondylosis and spondylolisthesis both. So in short, we need to remove the compression and also fix the slip vertebra. Now let us look at this post-operative x-ray which was taken after its surgery. You can very clearly see that the vertebra has been very nicely fixed. This patient was made to walk in the wards 12 hours after surgery. He was made to climb staircase 24 hours after surgery and was discharged on the fourth day with instructions to walk for at least 15 minutes every day, gradually increasing it to 2 kilometers in the coming one and a half months. So 
the point here is the goal was not just to eliminate the pain but to enhance his overall quality of life now over a year after his surgery he walks for an hour maybe hour and half sometimes every day his diabetes is under control the strength in his legs and thighs has improved the pain is gone he also had knee pain which also is reduced here it is important to remember that the hip joint and the knee joints are supported by the muscles of the legs these muscles are in turn supplied by the nerves which travel through the lumbar spine this is how lumbar spinal surgery helps in reducing the knee joint pain to some extent so in short the quality of life of this person is completely changed let's not forget that in today's era of medical advancements life expectancy is also increasing to lead independent and fulfilling life treatable conditions like lumbar canal stenosis should not go untreated due to fear or misconceptions lumbar canal stenosis is a prime example of a condition that when treated appropriately can restore a patient's quality of life completely it is also important to remember that in the last 10 to 15 years the technique of surgery the quality of surgery the quality of post operative care the safety in surgery has improved by leaps and bounds so i urge all my patients always not to base their decisions on you know some lay opinions or uh, very rampant misconceptions in the society it is also important to remember the role of surgery in today's world it was concept some years back that surgery is always the you know uh, it should be done when everything else has failed it is not true the quality of surgery today the safety of surgery today the technology that is available for surgery today has changed the indications of surgery and sometimes i feel that for the conditions which are surgically treatable it, surgery is sometimes better than you know continuing on medicines because medicines are in the end chemicals so when it is indicated when there is a very definite correlation between the mri findings and the patient's problems and we are confident that relieving this particular problem surgically is going to cure the symptoms surgery sometimes can be the first choice and one has to remember this shift in the point of view in the last 5 to 10 years thank you very much for watching a video from our series on spine surgery keep on watching and every week we bring you with a very interesting spinal problem and the surgery that can be offered for it is pros and cons and how to choose the correct modality of spinal surgery thank you very much for watching and we'll meet again